also uh, to speak over lunch, I uh, wanted in particular to thank uh, Michael and Haley and the most important employees, pseudo employees, Joyce Lanning, who got in touch with me several months ago about this, this event. And I try to give my support to local and state initiatives like this in the Southeast because I'm so committed to our uh, growing interest in investment in clean energy resources in this region. I worked for 22 years at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. For 10 years, I headed the Energy Efficiency, Renewable Energy and Electric Grid Research Program, one of the biggest in the country, you know, more than 100 million a year of investment in new technologies. And when I retired, I uh, about six years ago, I had a number of opportunities. I could go visit with my friends in California and all the friends I've made in the Northeast who were so committed to such things. Or I could stay in the Southeast and talk to those one or two or three people I knew in each state that talk the same language. And it's a growing choir. So I'm really uh, glad to have spent the last six, seven years teaching at Georgia Tech and over the past several years also being part of the TBA board, which I joined in, in 2010 and rejoined just uh, about two months ago with a second appointment, a second five-year term. Um, before I joined the TBA board back in 2010, I was also on the board of the American Council for Energy Efficient Economy, probably for about 10 years, and really appreciate the work that they do, a major driver in this field, a great uh, resource for information if you have questions about technologies or rates or anything, um, you'll find their website and their conferences to be very informative. Um, I do have some issues with a few of their ratings. <laughs> In particular, the treatment of the Tennessee Valley Authority is difficult because um, the states um, often have relinquished some of the policy leadership to TVA, and so when you go to ask what's the state doing, um, if you don't incorporate what TVA is doing into the ratings, we look as though we're not doing very much in those states of the Southeast. So maybe we'll return to that a, a little bit over the luncheon when I put up some of those state ratings and how we may want to make some adjustments. But for these few minutes, I wanted to talk a little bit about what I do think is Ken said is really one of the sort of best practice approaches to integrated resource planning, and that is uh, done by the Tennessee Valley Authority. Um, so, the first is a multi-step process. Uh, I don't know what happened to some of those bullet points, but you, know, you start by developing a load forecast. You define existing resources, establish what needs you have, um, identify resource options, analyze your portfolio, and, and in the end, select your portfolio strategy. Um, this is a very participatory process as TBA undertakes it. I think you did show a, a chart of where states require IRPs. TVA's been doing IRPs for a long time, but it wasn't shown up, didn't show up on your chart. So I'll have to work that one out. But um, every few years, these, uh, we return to an integrated resource uh, process, which, uh, as was mentioned, is a way of balancing demand side and supply side options to find the least cost solution to meeting energy service requirements in a, in a territory. And um, of course, the Tennessee Valley Authority, by um, its uh, originating founding act, uh, is not only attempting to find the least cost energy resource portfolio, but one which also maintains its uh, commitment to environmental stewardship and economic development, and also innovation is in the act. So we are uh, committed to looking at new solutions and doing some, ex some degree of experimentation. Um, what's done is a set of uh, strategies are identified and a set of scenarios are um, examined. So what is the future likely to look like? And then in this uh, way of treating the uncertainties and risks associated with future scenarios, 
considering a range of possibilities. So I'll, I'll show you um, in particular these six scenarios which were used in the 2011 IRP. So for instance, one scenario was that the economy recovers dramatically and you have a surge in, um, in uh, electricity demand. Or um, there's an environmental focus uh, in the uh, nation's um, policy. Or you have a prolonged economic malaise. Um, Game-changing technology, something unexpected arrives and can deliver uh, energy maybe more cleanly or cheap, cheaper. Energy independence becomes uh, very important. The threats to oil supply or other uh, supplies. And then carbon regulation creates economic downturn. I don't know where, where some of these um, were created. I, I didn't participate too much in the 2011 process. It was far along by the time I got onto the board. But as a board member, I uh, welcomed its uh, formal acceptance as a planning uh, tool for the um, future plans for TVA when it was approved in 2011. So in addition to looking at possible alternative future scenarios, you also have a range of <coughs> aggregate um, approaches, strategies that you could deploy. And you roll up the strategies against the future scenarios and rate them in a scorecard approach. So these are the um, five strategies that were examined in a, in a uh, quantitative fashion. So we have one which is a limited change to the current resource portfolio. Um, baseline plan resource portfolio, diversity, uh, nuclear, high nuclear or high efficiency demand response and renewables. So these were the different portfolio uh, strategies that were examined. And then in the end, we uh, elected to um, there were a set of recommended planning directions that emerged, and um, these are the commitments that were that came. These these are the recommendations. I'll show you in a minute how TBA responded, mostly in um, line with all of these recommendations, with uh, an exception or two. So we had a recommendation to significantly grow efficiency and demand response over the short term by 2020 and a significant uh, range of possible expansion of that commitment up to on the order of 14,000 gigawatt hours or uh, uh, billion kilowatt hours. I don't know if you feel it's more, it's, these are units that are tough to relate to, I apologize. Uh, renewable additions, so the megawatt range here, 1 to 2.5 uh, me thousand megawatts, or uh, coal capacity idle, there's a range there of uh, up to 4.7 gigawatts, large range was in the recommendation. Uh, 850, gigawatt, 850 megawatts of new storage capacity. Facility in Tennessee, which is a wonderful asset uh, for TVA. Unfortunately, there are some engineering problems. It's been down for a year. And in addition, we've not added new capacity. It's very difficult to find sites to uh, be able to, ex to move into a new pump storage um, <coughs> capacity. So that's the one we've fallen short on. Uh, nuclear additions, the increased contribution of nuclear generation, so that represents the commitment to the second unit at Watts Bar, the Watts Bar plant in Tennessee. Coal additions from zero to 900 megawatts. Uh, none have been added, none are planned at the, this moment, so we're within that range. Uh, natural gas additions, 900 to 9,300 megawatts of potential additions. Uh, you've utilized it as an intermediate uh, supply source. That means, unlike coal or nuclear, which is mostly uh, base load, it's, of course, easier to 
regulate up and down with demand, so we call it intermediate. And then power purchasing um, to, to um, meet um, deviations from that plan base load. We will celebrate the creation of a virtual power plant of 1,077 megawatts, which is the sum total capacity that is now being met by energy efficiency, the equivalent of meeting, of creating a new supply, but instead reducing the requirements for that amount of capacity from the efficiency programs that have been operating over the past five year, years. Yay. The celebration was somewhat de minimis. One of the problems with energy efficiency is that it happens in such small units, in so many different places. You never really seem to have a single ribbon cutting event. And I think that's one thing that we need on occasion to celebrate these, these achievements, which en masse are so substantial. So uh, this is the sort of participatory uh, planning approach that is is taking place. We are now refreshing the integrated resource planning process. We've uh, um, committed to starting it all over again this year, a year earlier than anticipated because there have been so many changes. We're not, you know, in terms of the scenario planning, we're not doing, we're not in that big economic push mode. We're also not in economic malaise. We're somewhere in between. So we, don't, we have natural gas, ample resources, and it's cheap. A lot of unplanned conditions, which means that a fresh look at the integrated resource planning process is needed. And Lois is telling me I need to wrap up. I want to or welcome. So to the extent that you can learn from this and creating IRP opportunities in the southern two-thirds of um, the state. I wish you well and I stand ready to help in any way I can.